I don't know about that one. <laughs> I don't know about that one, bro. It's too many. It's too many vulnerable spots in Texas. Let the, let Mexico find out Texas ain't a part of the U.S. <laughs> you ever been to West? Cartel West? finna be in that motherfucker so motherfucking quick. Tejas. Tejas. <laughs> Tejas Cartagena. <laughs> <laughs> shit ain't Texas no more, baby. <laughs> All right, it's so obvious that they stole Texas, bro. Now they like we sitting there talking about it. They ain't even really changed the name that much. Oh, yeah. Texas, Mexico, Tex. Uh, come on, it's, it's spelled without the ex. See, right? Now they got real flavor with New Mexico. Imagine somebody taking your shit and then like, it's the new. This the new it's one. The, the new eighty five sound. <laughs> oh, I <laughs> seen that. <laughs> yeah, I seen that. Yeah, that was so I seen the clip pop up. I was like, these niggas in the trap. In the, in the two numbers. <laughs> 13 South. I said, nigga, 13 South. <laughs> All right, J-O-N, I think it's about that time for us to at least get ready to start getting ready. Everybody get in your places, please. <laughs> this is the pre-show. Yeah, yeah that part was. Let's go. You see how we switched the whole mood? That was just dope to just hear some black men talking about some worldly affairs and shit. Mm -hmm. Anything else we should discuss? Y'all ready for the recession? <laughs> you gotta be ready. All right, think about it for a minute. I forgot that's in your lane. I know you <laughs> just wait, just hold, just hold that one for me. Hold, hold, that, hold that thought for me. I forgot you know what that's you're talking You know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. What y'all spending money on these days, black people? I think everybody took the same breath. <laughs> yeah. Besides gas. Travel, that's, that's what we spend money on. We travel. The experiences, travel. right? Yeah. yeah. And work, we travel working. all the time. We've been in Atlanta, people think we live out here. Come out here like every other week. Could have sworn y'all lived out here. Everybody knows. Why y'all don't live out here? I'm trying. Well, I'm trying. Come on, be a part of the goddamn ecosystem, man. You ain't got to stay all the time. No. Nah. You can let me stay at your shit when you ain't. <laughs> <laughs> Turn that shit into an Airbnb. They finna get rid of the party with <laughs> Yeah, they, they cut back on those out here. Yeah, yeah, Airbnb. Yeah, they try yeah, to. Yeah. Two they just stop. Yeah, they're not abandoning uh, parties in Airbnb. Yeah. No parties? No yeah, they say, yeah, they put it in the contract. And what they're going to do is if you violate it, they um, take you off Airbnb, the person who's listing the house. Oh, uh, so it's your fault. If somebody throws a party in your crib. Yeah, so yeah. now you got to enforce it now. You just went too far. How you going to enforce it, though? It's tough. Uh, I guess the ring cameras. Oh, the ring shit. cameras, they, they got them at the front. They can see who's going in the house. What classifies a party? Like more than 10 people? That's a good question. Three to five. I got a guess. I think if you make a flyer. <laughs> <laughs> if nigga make a flyer, bro, like, like niggas get together can get out of control, nigga. <laughs> um, We're having a kickback. That's back. a good question, though. What, what? They might have to specify it, because what does... This, this, this is Bible study. Yeah. I dispute that shit. Be like, it wasn't a party. We had a little soiree. <laughs> Dinner party. Like, come on now. Hey, we had a soiree. What? That was it. Yeah. We had a function. It was a rendezvous. It was a oh, rendezvous. man. It was a meetup. <laughs> We had a meet and greet. Meet and greet. Right. <laughs> I like that. I like that. <laughs> I like that. We had a mixer. Mixer. That's bad. That's probably the best title. Mm -hmm. It was a you mixer. You gotta get better with your words. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Language selection. is important. Language it was a mixer. Is Language is very no important. No alcohol was served. <laughs> we just smoked a lot. Hey man, you miss teaching? I still teach. It's but a different like, subject. You mean teaching kids? Uh, I really. You teaching grown people now? Kids too. The, the, the kids is watching, same way the adults is watching. Man, get that weed smoke off him while we're talking about the kids. <laughs> talking about the fucking kids, man. My kids gonna see this shit. They are. <laughs> they are. It's a filter. <laughs> <laughs> I need no fucking bubble boy over me. <laughs> where the 85 South name come from? Obviously, I know the highway, but where? Why y'all call it 85 South? You ain't see what 85 South do? That shit just be running through the city. Mm. Yeah, we right there. We, it's the heart of the city. That's what we, you know what I'm saying? Sure. Not just in Atlanta, though. Yeah. We right there in the middle of the world. You feel me? Love it. 85 South, shit. Love it. We done took this shit all around the world. People who never even been on 85 South. Did y'all think it was gonna get that big when y'all first did it? It ain't even as big as I thought it was gonna get yet. Yeah, this motherfucker, that, this is crazy, though. Love it. It's what not as big as you thought it was going to get yet. Too. Because in my mind, it's still, it's still... The vision, you already had it. 
it's still bigger. Yeah. I'm still seeing it how I saw it. It's you get what I'm saying? From the beginning, though. You yeah. saw it from the beginning. There's beginning. always more people to read. Three dudes yeah. on one table. Did the, did the highway department ever reach out to y'all? Like, what you mean? Like 85 South, like, that's the highway. <laughs> they never hit you? Like, yo. <laughs> I don't know yet. I didn't know the Department of Transportation right. Where's the legal team? had a social media. <laughs> <laughs> we would love to work with the, the Department of Transportation, I guess. What, state, what states does 85 South cover? A lot of A lot, bro. Yeah, that's just, it's not a lot, really. You, you, you in logistics? Dude, from yeah, North so Carolina to the goddamn... Uh, I know go out Like the top of North, North Carolina, for sure. North Carolina, Carolina all the way to fucking Florida. Georgia. Florida? Mm, no, not Florida. Nah, Florida is 75 South. Yeah. 85 South. Like George, here, probably here. Yeah, Alabama. Stop here. Alabama. I think it stops at like the top of North Carolina. Okay. And it turns into 77, I think. And 95 North. It don't matter. 95 go from New York all the way. I-95. Yeah, to Florida. Yeah, I do. Try to survive on 95. The 10, that's east to west, that's Texas. Yeah. Hell yeah. Heavy traffic. <laughs> it makes sense. What made y'all go with Earn Your Leash? He needed a hashtag. He was having his own social media campaign. Word. <laughs> yeah, he was trying to like be a financial advisor. He needed a hashtag. I was like, I got one for you. I was like, Earn Your Leisure. It was kind of like synonymous like of us being in the place and people think we didn't work hard for anything we had. Who thought that? A lot of people. I'm sure people think that what y'all do is easy. Like, until they try to do it. Until they try to do yeah, it. Yeah. Then they realize like how hard it is to do. They'll never try like, to do it. Well, they gonna try. They'll Monday morning, they'll sideline, oh, I need y'all money. I can do that shit if I, but they don't realize how hard y'all work. Like I told them before, like, if nothing else fails, like, we know that y'all coming. <laughs> y'all gonna show up every single day. So yeah. you've earned some of the, the freedoms that you had, which is really the, the phrase, earn your freedom. Leisure. Got to. Because this looked like leisure, but it's not. This was earned. Low key, that leisure is some freedom. You can do shit when you want to. Yeah. <laughs> That's the ultimate freedom. That's yeah. the only kind of freedom that really matters. Like, you can't, if you can't move how you want to move, you're not free. Yeah. That would be the perfect spot to tell them. Welcome back to the 85 Self <laughs> Show. Oh my God. Oh my God. I done watched y'all change so much since we start recording this show. Your hair done grew back. <laughs> hair done grew back. Pandemic <laughs> over. Damn, we done been through so much. The ups, the downs. You done been in two relationships since you started watching it. <laughs> Not counting all the people you done fucked with. But it's been two whole relationships. Some of y'all got pandemic babies that's walking, talking, going in the refrigerator right now. <laughs> that's how we living over here. Did you know that the 85 South Show was voted the number one podcast amongst black men that prefer black women? Thank you for that. We know our audience well. Outstanding. We know our Outstanding. audience well. Bro. Outstanding. And this is the number one show amongst black women who wear slides most of the time. <laughs> most slid show. Very important too. Very important. It's very important. Stay season too. I see a few slides right, right now actually. Why would I lie to you? Oh yeah. It makes sense. Oh, yeah. Why would I lie to you? Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we got some very special guest in the house with us today. Bruh, last time these dudes was on the show, they didn't made triple their net worth since they left. <laughs> I know because I keep up with them. Um, <laughs> I know it's money in the building. I don't know what you've been doing or what you need to start doing, but if you don't have nobody in your life that's going to tell you to do some shit right, this who you need to link up with right here because they changing people's lives and breaking the game down and helping people do it along the way. Let's go. None other than Earn Your Leisure in Fear. Today. <laughs> I already know they're gonna put me up on so much game. I need it. 
Welcome Baby. back. Always Thank good you. to be here. Thank Thank welcome back. Man, that's, that's what I'm saying. Y'all don't even feel like guests, man. I feel like this supposed to happen it's, quarterly. It's, it's family. Or whenever y'all in Atlanta, quarterly. y'all supposed to stop through here. Sure. That's a fact. Game yeah. us up. And make sure that we straight and yeah, we earn it. the beginning and the end of the physical. Come, come on, man. That's a fact. No. And, we, and we always bring guests with us. Last time we brought my man Trap. Yeah. I think we introduced you to Trap. Yeah, you did. And yeah. now my now man. Now look at him. Alex, good energy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Today for my man Alex Good Energy. I know you used to drive trucks, right? Yeah. This is gonna be legendary. I didn't know that. You used to drive trucks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what you do? Nah, nah, never drove a truck. The hell you bring that up for him? He got a company where he he teaches people how to um, get in a truck, like own trucks. Oh. Not drive them though. Not drive them. Nah. Clean on there. Yeah. And dispatch. Yeah. You fuck with the dispatch? Yeah. Yeah, that's easy. That's some good money if you know how to do that shit. Absolutely. Not good, you gotta be efficient with it. You drive yeah. 18 wheelers? Yeah. Wow. Like a, month, a good dispatcher, if she know how to route you and you can make money going either that's direction, yep. that's the key. It's not to be wasting, you know, like don't waste no trips. Yeah, that's a fact. That's yeah. one of the things. You gotta be efficient. You gotta be real efficient. You know, we got, you know we got a truck? You know we got a truck? Uh-uh. You ever seen it? Yeah. I, ain't see, I seen your truck. I seen it. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I, I don't have one, though. You know what I'm saying? You, did you know that we have a truck? Yeah. All right. It's we need the link. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we, we got to right use y'all service. Yeah. Because when we do our shows, man, we got a truck too. We okay. just didn't put our logo on it. Carries the equipment. Yeah. Okay. Should you should put your logo on it? You think so? Yeah. yeah. It's good. It's, it's a like a, it's a billboard. But I don't want billboard. nobody to steal it. Nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> y'all love. Y'all got love, man. People I know. Love y'all. They gonna take pictures of it, man. Yeah. They gonna take pictures of it. Man, I got this truck out there. Nigga, take that shit, man. God damn, they got a show tonight, bro. Take this shit, man. I got tickets to that shit tonight. (laughs) That shit is dope, bro. It's a movie. Every single day, somebody tags us. Like, yo, we seen it in Mississippi. We seen it in Alabama, Arkansas, New York. Like, it's a moving billboard. It's like they know you're coming to town. It's gonna be perfect. Absolutely. 85% of us. See, now motherfuckers gonna be in the comments like, bro, when you get it, let me drive this. <laughs> <laughs> I need a driver. Pull over. I got Seven my CGL. Man, get me this motherfucker. Cut that shit off the track. <laughs> yeah. Take a picture, man. <laughs> Show. That's what's up. That trucking industry. That's a hell of an industry, man. Yeah. Shit. 800, 800 billion dollar a year. Yeah. You know, and it's crazy. But even when the pandemic happened, we were talking about the pandemic earlier. Everything shut down. Except them the trucks truck. kept running. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the truck got all the shit on them. Yup. You want to see a real pandemic, let them trucks stop. Then you'll see a pandemic, for real. It ain't no food in the supermarket and stuff like that, you know? For real. Yeah, that's why I got into it. I was like, man, I used to throw parties, all that cool stuff. It was cool. I was like, all right, I got to get into something that is going to be here forever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I fucks with it, though. That's what I used to deliver, too. Turkey parts to the fucking, uh, to the place that make the sandwich meat. The boys had it? Nah, like uh, Blue is Rich. Okay. <laughs> I ain't want to say the name, but oh. you forced my hand. <laughs> Louis Rich is going to be in the comments. No, he didn't. <laughs> fuck up. I don't know. Fuck up, Louis. Nah, nigga going to get a dead turkey head on that lawn, nigga. Now, one day I had delivered some shit. I delivered some shit out there, right? And I seen where they keep all them, all the fucking birds and shit, right? It's like these motherfuckers know they about to be sandwich meat. Cause you would think it'd be a lot of noise and squawking and feathers and shit everywhere. They just be sitting there like, like in the cages and all that. Like they know it's their turn. That affected you? Do you ain't want to eat it no more? Nah, I <laughs> thought that. I was Sleep like, that's what they, they look like. That night. They're so delicious. That night. <laughs> that night. I'm glad so... they was at peace. <laughs> <laughs> that shit didn't affect me in no way. I was trying to figure out a way to get me some free meat out that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> My heart don't Niggas work like that, man. Turkeys. I ain't never looked at nothing and felt bad for eating it. Except a lady. <laughs> a human. <laughs> if 
you pieces I wish I wouldn't have ate. <laughs> <laughs> Just because I feel like she got something to hold against me, you feel me? Potentially. Yeah. I'm just feel like, she was like, yeah, when you ate my pussy, and I should have did it. Gotta be careful. You're gonna be like that. You ungrateful. Oh, really? That's how you go at Stupid. That ain't even an insult no more. You weren't saying that when you was eating my pussy? <laughs> yeah, it just, Neither right. were you. <laughs> That's All that, right. That's that DMX kid. Kendrick Lamar song. What? Yeah, yeah, that's dysfunctional. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fuck you. He got the movie or the video. I ain't seen it yet. You got a video for that song? I think his song put, like, he was doing a screening for it. Oh, I ain't seen it. But, that's, yeah. that's dysfunctional. What's been up, man? Shit, man. Working, bro. Moving around the world, trying to get like y'all. What you mean, trying to get like me? <laughs> you making big plays out here in these y'all streets. Y'all trying to get like we trying to do y'all shit. Y'all supposed to tell us how to navigate. Oh, man. Hell, yeah. This, uh, climate we in. Nah, it's a, it's, a, it's a good time, man. It's a good time. I see y'all had Steve on the show. Yeah. Y'all ain't even telling yeah. my name. Don't clap. Don't clap. No, nobody clap. Don't clap. Nobody clap. Don't know who the fuck Mancia is. Mancia. <laughs> <laughs> the 85 ers went ham in the comments. I don't know who Mancia is. We still trying to figure out. Who yeah. Mencia is? Carlos I, Mencia. When, when it happened... Apparently he's a Mexican comic that used to be real popular. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, well, there's no question who he is. You know who he is, but, but you don't know... has nothing to do with this problem. program. Yeah, when he said... What happened? He said, <laughs> yeah. what happened? So he was giving them props, and right. he was giving, like, oh, yeah, and he said everybody's name, and then he was like, DC and um, Chico and Mencia. And I'm like, well, he ain't say Lowe's name. So I thought it was an inside I joke that y'all had between each other. You think me and Steve just keep it back making inside jokes? I see you, man. See you. I get it. I'm like, damn, why you calling that? And then the comments was like, who the fuck is that? I'm like, man, oh. see you in them boys. I was like, damn. I did Stevon Hart. Stevon. Stephen. Nah, that's my dog. Shout out to Steve Harvey. Oh. He might just have one of Here we go. Bro, right he, up. Oh, he, he, I mean, he do a lot. He, bro, he got two out of three. He, he, he got two oh, out of three. He do a lot. He yeah. probably had the other, you know what I'm saying? He said right. the group name. Right. right. So that counts. Mm -hmm. Y'all did it. Yeah, yeah. Right. I, I'm not tripping. Sure. Ryan, the only person that was clapping. <laughs> Shout out to Steve. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Steve Harvey. So though. clap. Yeah. yeah, man. Steve cool. He that dude. I ain't mad at all. Yeah. At least he knew it was three people. <laughs> <laughs> On the brighter note. <laughs> now, what we got to do to get this truck game jumping? Man, you know, what I like about trucking is so many ways to get into it. You know, that's what I love about it. You can get in as a fleet owner. Some people ain't in a position to buy a truck right now. You know, all the prices are inflated right now. So, you know, dispatching is like a game changer. I show people, I'm showing people how to like dispatch. You know, it's like pretty, you know what a dispatch is, but for the people that don't know, I would, I would compare it to like air traffic control to an airplane, the people that, you know, negotiate the loads, the people that tell the driver what time to be there, the address to pick up and all that good stuff. So, you know, dispatching is a dope way that you can get in. To say he got a truck, but he don't got time to be dispatching his truck. He ain't got time to deal with his driver. Um, he you don't. Was, right? You as a dispatcher, you could dispatch his truck for him and get 10% off whatever his truck make. Right? right? So if you ain't got the money to buy a truck, you can literally just dispatch the truck, get 10%. So if you make his truck $8,000 in a week, right, gross, you get $800 off of that. But just imagine if he had like a fleet of trucks, five trucks, and you dispatching five trucks at $8,000 a week, 800 times five times four weeks. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of people are getting in the game who don't got the capital to buy a truck right now. And, and right now is not really a good time to buy a truck. Like, I'm gonna just be real with you. Trucks that was $50,000 last year is like 80, 90 right now. Yeah, well you better buy them before they be 200. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ain't, you waiting on the price to go down. You got shit fucked up. <laughs> ain't shit going down. Once yeah. Coke was a dollar, that bitch was just a dollar and up. There ain't That's no going time. back down. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So, you better yeah. get in where you fit in right now. So, you know, having contracts is, is good right now. You know what I'm saying? You get you a good rate, negotiate you a good rate. Even though the fuel prices is high, they got something called a fuel surcharge. So you'll be able to negotiate a little bit more money with the fuel being so high. But, uh, you know, again, you know, prices is up, fuel is up, but it still ain't gonna stop, you know? Yeah. It still ain't gonna stop. So I'm gonna be doing it forever. I've been doing it for 10 years now. And, you know,
You know, I started off doing it just to get my people out the streets. I had so many cousins that was in the streets. They still and, uh, out there. Yeah, but a lot. Niggas be the same. They ain't trying to get my people out the streets. Hey. Them niggas never left. Are <laughs> <laughs> oh, you doing your little thing with the truck, huh, cuz? <laughs> Man, come fuck yeah. with me. Nah, nah, these streets need me, my nigga. <laughs> <laughs> nah, for sure. <laughs> Can't leave the streets alone, need you. That's just, that's, see, that's ironic, though. He started a trucking business to get his people out the streets. Trucks ride on streets. They was going to be in the streets anyway. We won't get them off the streets and on the road. But you know what's so crazy? <laughs> that's a fact. You know what's so crazy, though? Like, that's why I love our platform, because, like, before I met him, I never even thought about trucks as being a business. I just looked at trucks as just, it's on the road. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's so many different mobile homes. We did somebody with mobile homes. I never even thought about mobile home vending machines. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've never seen anybody take money out of a vending machine ever in life. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Have you? Hell yeah. What have type you? of life have you been living? You see, you take money? <laughs> I've never yeah, seen I, somebody I, own the vending machine and yeah. take the money out of it. I think I, 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 I know the way you talk about it. Not like that. You're talking about like. No, no, I'm talking about actually <laughs> owning the vending machine. <laughs> you nigga got the wrong Yeah, yeah, you talking about the other way. I see who's taking it out. I just never knew who owned it. I've seen people taking the money. And I was like, damn, that's a lot of singles, and then they go, but you never know who owns it. Yeah. And so I they collect it. I saw when I was a kid, right? Yeah. I was at the laundromat. This fucking dude came in, he had a key to all them shits, and he had a big ass bag of quarters. Mm. And then these was the old vending machines, so he, he had just one key for everything. He opened that shit, got some more quarters out there, and it was a stack of dollars. I was like, he rich. I'm a kid, though. Yeah, man. but you was, like I said, I never seen that. But it's like that on purpose because you never, it's done so you can never think about that. Mm -hmm. You think about what they want you to think about. But you don't, you don't think about business. So now it's like, now we can actually think about business because we got people like him, every industry, where they actually not only showing that you, they do this, but they giving you the game on how to do it. Yeah. So it's like unlocking a secret code, like, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like, damn. I, I always bought clothes my whole entire life. I never knew the business behind merch. I never knew how you actually make merch, profit margins, how you, sh I just, we just buy clothes, mm -hmm. like, you know what I'm saying? Even mm -hmm. entertainment, like we just watch entertainment, we just listen to music. We never understood the business behind it, like damn. So now it's like a whole new form of education where it's like a tidal wave. Every single thing is just getting like, oh, this is how you do that, that's a business, I could do this, I could do that. Okay, you know what I mean? Like this is like the first time in a, ever mm -hmm that this much information is out there. Because yeah. you knew about trucks, but what was you doing? Oh, I was just fucking off. When no, I was no, 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 what was you doing, though? You was, you was, was driving, driving, right? So that's what they limited us to for so long. When you think trucks, you just think, oh, I got to drive the truck. That's, that's, that's what we was held to thinking that that's what trucking was. Oh, they got a great pitch when you, when you go to that fucking school. Though. Right, right. But see, I wasn't in a position to drive. Like, I'm not good with driving long distances. I fall asleep yeah, after three hours. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Need you but I ain't use that. <laughs> That's a fact. And I know that. So I was like, look, I wanted to get in the game, but I got to figure out a different avenue. How you know it's three hours? Because I'll be driving to Charlotte sometimes, and right when I get to Charlotte, I'm like, yep, that's it. Oh. Can't do it. Cuts off. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Because the beauty of it is like, what, what Shai's talking about and what Alex is talking about is like, yeah, you can watch him do it, but people are watching y'all do it. Like, we talked about that last time. You're like, nah, nah, I don't tell these people, but they're literally watching y'all do it, right? Y'all got merch, y'all have a show, y'all <laughs> doing live events, and now you got a network of people that signed to you. And so they're watching you create businesses when they thought like, oh, these guys are just comedians. Nah, they're actually businessmen that are building infrastructure in real time. And so people that are coming to watch the events, they see like the show, the entertainment part, but there's a business structure that's behind it. So y'all doing it too. You're trying to expose shit. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you always do that? <laughs> Nah, I need to be celebrating. Nah, it's though. important. It, it it's definitely important. needs to be talking about. Cause... I mean, if they're gonna have slides and watch your show, they need to know. What? <laughs> They don't need to know the business of this shit. <laughs> Figure it out, y'all. Right, they gonna go. be in there Googling shit. You know, Carlos get $1,000 every time he say bitch, right? I know that. <laughs> That's crazy. That nigga's sponsored by the dictionary. <laughs> Big bitch. Big bitch. Big bitch. <laughs> and this bitch check that brought to you by. <laughs> Bitch.com. <laughs> we she taking you out the group chat. <laughs> oh, you telling everything. Then y'all got a network of people saying to you. Who? Who? Who saying the death row? Shout, shout out to Poor Minds. <laughs> What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Lex P. And it's your girl, Dre Nicole. And the For Rich or Poor Tour is coming to Birmingham at the Lyric Theater on August 6th. Yes, it's about to be so lit, and the door is going to open at 7 p.m. 
them. I can't wait to see all of y'all. Y'all need to make sure y'all get y'all tickets because they selling out super fast. Super fast. And y'all know we love us a small town because we really going to get down. Mm -hmm. So make sure y'all get y'all tickets at www.poorminds.com. And like Dre said, the tickets is going fast, y'all. And I know they seen the clips because we've kicked off this tour with a bang, girl. Yeah, the clips has been lit. Y'all see what's going on? Yeah, so make sure y'all get y'all tickets and we'll see y'all August 6th. We outside. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Lex P. And it's your girl, Dre and Nicole. And we are bringing the For Rich or For Poor tour to Columbia, South Carolina on August 5th at the Senate. Yes, and you know doors going to open early. And make sure that y'all put that ish on. Yes, because y'all know we came dressed to impress. I know y'all seen the clips from the other shows. We outside. Yeah, stop playing. Make sure you get your tickets right now at poorminds.com because they selling out so fast. Yes. And we don't want to hear y'all complaining because, you know, the tickets is gone. They tickets is gone. So make sure you put me. Period. And we'll see y'all August 5th. We outside. Period. <laughs> <laughs> Great show, by the way. Shout out to our brother 19 Keys on there. Shout out to them. Shout out to them. Shout out to them. Ryan with okay, the soul clap. <laughs> he holding it down, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we, you know, we always try to expand the business part of it. Because, you know, the entertainment part of it is there. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, why the fuck would we be around all these great-minded people who have a great network, who actually do business on the upfront, and not try to connect and network, put pieces where they need to be and make it all make sense. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? So that's it. Shout out to the whole team, though. Everybody over here holding it down. <laughs> holding it down. Yeah. We're going to sure. keep expanding our empire, too. We just dropped some onesies for the babies. Yes, sir. Kids love this. I'm talking yeah. about yeah, yeah, yeah. We got some onesies for the newborns. The kids love this show. People send us videos each and every day of the babies sitting there just kicking the feet, laughing. I don't know if they understand the joke, so it's the sound of our voice. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, the sound of your voice. Probably. They, they, they got a favorite character it's that they common like. to the babies. Yeah, 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 for sure. I'm gonna just come in here and sit on the couch and just talk for an hour just for the kids. Read some Dr. Seuss or some shit. Nah, he racist. We came. Nah, uh, yeah. Damn. You gotta think of another author. We'll find some. You read anything. Yeah, you right. Fuck it. Make some shit up. Kids like story. So, man, you done really blew up. You modeling this shit now. Right? <laughs> I see you, you wear like four outfits a day now. <laughs> you know what, man? I Troy just, ain't want to say nothing. I, mean, this year, man, man. I just felt like I just wanted to be a fashion icon. So just... What are some of your inspirations, bro? We're not going to let you just be out here without supporting you and shit like that. Who you? Who, who, you, inspired who by? are you inspired by? The 90s. Everybody, like that 90s era, New York, Nas. Raekwon, like yeah. that drug dealer type of yeah. late 80s, early 90s, mid 90s. That's that's my inspiration. Drug dealers. Yeah, yeah. and rappers. It was the flyest ones. Yeah. Right but now. you know what's so crazy though? Like, I'm gonna be honest, because that is a major inspiration, but I feel like now we can flip it and we're not selling drugs. We positive, we, we yeah. doing legal things, but we still like the fly era. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you can get that, you can get the girls, you can do everything, but you can do it without risking your life, right. yeah. without risking right. your freedom. So it's important for people to see it because it's like, yeah. if, the, if we just wore suits every day, we, there's a people that might not be able to understand what, we, what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So now they seem like, damn, he look like us. Somebody I aspired to be. Right. Yeah. Now you look like the promoter, the one they pay you when you get there. <laughs> yeah. Back is important. What y'all doing tomorrow? I got a day party. <laughs> <laughs> Back night moves without promoters. Yeah. That's, a That's a fact. That's a fact. Yeah. That's a fact. Ask, Come from that. Ask Alex, the other That's Alex. Accent Shout out to AG. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but yeah, so, you know, but it's too, it's about having fun with it, bro. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like we at a point now where I was just talking to oh, my guy Toby. You know him, Toby Nwigwe? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was telling, I'm, I'm trying to put He the, said he ain't coming to the trap if he can't bring his kids. I was like, bro, like bring them. all the kids. <laughs> bring <laughs> everybody who been in your video with you. <laughs> we gonna change the color here, He too. think we ain't gonna put the weed up if the kid's here. He don't even know. Everybody over here got kids. Yeah. You bring, I bring mine. 
This is right. the only time I get to smoke. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I've been shooting so many episodes. Yeah. 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 Told me if you bring the kids, we gonna put the weed in the car. Relax. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Toby. That's my Toby. dude, man. But now yeah. I was telling him, like, I was trying to A and R song. I, I met some some guys out in LA that I, I rock with. And he was like, "Yo, you crazy for doing this, bro? Like, this is what you're doing with your time. I respect it. Cause it's just for me, just having fun. Like, you know what I mean? It's like we got a point now where we got so many relationships. We got an audience. It's like just go left when everybody going right. So I'm like, are right, we talking about finance? We talking about money? But I want to be a fashion icon. So I just decided to be a fashion icon one day. <laughs> do it. 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 Just be it. Just be it. That's a fact. You can be with A lot of shit you just gotta do. Yeah. That's a fact. And say it. And say it. Once you say you say it enough times, nobody got to believe it. Lil Wayne said he was the best rapper alive until everybody said he was the best rapper alive. Jay Z, when he said Biggie, Jay Z, and Nas, nobody was putting him in that category. Right. He put himself in that category. He even surpassed it. He's right. like, best rapper. When you say some stuff mm -hmm. enough and you really believe it, yep. people got to. Like, Jada like, do it too. Jada do it too. He'd be like top five, top that five or alive. That or alive. Yeah, it don't yeah. matter. You know what I'm saying? So when you hear Jada, you you automatically think that. My yeah. boy Rob Hayes, shout out to Rob Hayes, said yeah. all you need is for two people to say it. Yeah. That's, That's it. people. That's a fact. That's a fact. He said, so if I say it, somebody else say it. one more. That's people. That's yeah. a fact. Yeah. That's how you build it. But you gotta have the audacity to believe it, right? Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, I really believe that. I'm gonna walk in it, I'm gonna talk in it, and it's just the following one will come. Yeah. So when he says that, it's like, all right, bet. He is, why not? Who's, yeah. who's to say he's not? Yeah, basically. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> Don't even get me started. <laughs> That's how we sitting right here today. Mm -hmm. You gotta say some shit so unbelievable. You what? gotta do something that nobody thinks that you can do. Welcome back to the 85 Sound Show. This is what That's what I said. Who ever thought that we would keep this picture of Marvin Gaye here this long? Legendary. Ain't nobody else doing that. He's looking at us? Legendary. He's definitely looking at us. Marvin's mm -hmm. always looking. That's a fact. That's what I said. You said the dream that you, not even the dream, the vision you had, hasn't even been reached yet. Not yet. But that's the belief in it. Like This shit gonna be bigger than Harry Potter, man. Believe it. Mm. I do. Yeah, I know that. I, I vision this, this shit so big, I don't even, I'm not even sure there's enough black people in America to fuck with this for it to be as big as I see it. We might have to go to like- I even might. South America and, and Africa too. You gotta go global. You have to go global. Already over there. I know yeah. what I'm saying, like in a grand scale, like. They already rock. In up. Africa, we gotta be as big as Wiz you Kid. You see them? That's yeah. In Africa, we got to be as big as Wiz Kid. Go but in Brazil, you gotta go over we got to be as big as that lady who be on the news with the fat ass twerking. <laughs> I don't know her name, That's a fact. but she one of the most popular people over there. But she be over there. The news yeah, exactly. Exactly. Go over Everything there. you saying, that's why, that's why Steve Harvey yeah. went to Africa. It's like, we went to Nigeria, and like, in America, I think there's 70 million black people in America. That ain't enough. So Nigeria is a country with 200 million people, and they all black. And 80% of the population is under 21. 90% of the population is under 18. So it's like, look at the opportunity. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, look at the opportunity out there. And that's Where just- Where they old people at? What they doing with they old people? They done moved. They, they have babies. No, no. Yeah. They, they can have babies. babies. Yeah. But that's just one country. Right. That's what I'm saying. You got that's just one country. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Think about all those countries with people that look like us, yeah. but we not tapping in. Yeah. That's why I say it can't even be like, we have that's to. We you, you're going to do it. Not like we need to. No, we have to be there. We got to be there. We got to. <clears throat> when they ask us what we think of the future, we think world domination. We don't think United States because financial literacy isn't a. A, a country issue. It's not an American issue. It's a world issue. Yeah. And so if we spread, yeah, we're we gonna get this shit down, and then we're gonna move on to something else. I got this. Oh, you got hey, it? No, y'all got this. No, I'm saying like we're gonna get the finances right. Yeah. And then we're gonna move on to some real, like some other real shit too. Yeah. I bet. I'm just saying. I'm just making sure, oh. that, like, as the black community, <laughs> yeah, we got fact. a plan. Yeah. Fact. Yeah. And the, the the thing is, like, if you think about how bad our people need it here. Right, with the lack of education, especially in the financial world, think about other countries who have don't have the same form of education. Right, they need it just as bad, and we got a unifier, the internet, that can spread it. They don't have to go to school anymore. They can watch us on YouTube. They can watch us on their phones, and so the information is rarely available. It's just that they don't have anybody speaking from their perspective, from their respective countries. 
And so that's why it's important that like when I'm like, yo, we have to go to Africa, we gotta go to Europe, we gotta touch our shit, we gotta go to these countries because they need it. But we're not gonna go to saying like, yo, this is our message. We're gonna find the people that have the message, link with them and say like, all right, we, we, these people are stamped. Like, these are the people from your country that you should be checking in with because they have the gift. Because when we leave, right, when we go back to our respective homes, wherever that's going to be in the world, they'll still be there to give the message out. And, and it's, I said 70. I don't really think that that number is accurate. I think it's less. I think it's a lot less. But the bottom line is that it's not just black people either. Like, mm -hmm. People all over. Fact. They need it. White people. Asian people, Spanish people, like some, we, we limit ourselves sometimes to just black. Yep. Mm -hmm. But the whole world, the whole world needs to hear the message because they already, they already listen to our music. They already love our, our culture in mm -hmm. Asia yeah. and Japan, all of that. Like, so why not export everything else? Why not Absolutely. export things that, like, they need us. They, they need us to be leaders. Yeah, I, got, I got stopped in the parking lot at the gym. This white dude pulled up on me and he was like, Troy? I'm like, damn, who's, who's, whose father is this? And he was, got out of his car and he was like, look, I just want to tell you, I love what y'all doing. I love what Ernie Lee's doing. I learned so much. And most people would probably think I don't because I'm a white man who comes from privilege. But I come from privilege. I have no idea what to do with this money. I'm watching y'all and y'all are giving us instructions. So don't think that it's just like your community that's watching you. There's people who are like me who are watching you because they have no idea. That was the agent they did assigned to you. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that was the agent. That was it. Mm. <laughs> Thank that you, Agent Smith. That story scared the shit out of me. I was like, what is <laughs> Troy? <laughs> hey, I've We've learned a lot We've watching you. We've been watching you for a while. I was uh, looking through your file. <laughs> I ain't been watching your show. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, you're right. I got his plate. I got his plate. The men in black. Right. Look yeah. at this light. Is that your car? Nope. No, it's got <laughs> it's to be multicultural, though. We got all kind of people watching this show. Eskimos, yeah. <laughs> Native Americans, a few of the lost tribes of the Congo. We touch bases, man. I believe it. <laughs> yeah, man. I want my shit to be international, like worldwide, like out of space and shit. I want this shit to be like on one of them space launches. I need somebody to just pull up the 85 South show. Probably going up, yeah. Probably yeah. in space. Yeah. I can see it. I don't know, bro. You got to dream big. If your dreams don't sound crazy, they ain't big enough. Yeah, right. And yeah, if they don't scare crazy. you, if they don't scare you, it ain't big enough either. For real? Yeah, they got, they got, my moves, I got to be a little scared before I, before I do them. If it, ain't, if it ain't a little scary. What's the last scared move you made? Um, I just uh, put 16 acres under contract right there by Turner Hill Mall. You were scared? Yeah. 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 I'm about to do something that's never been done in, my, in my industry. I'm about to um, do a truck parking lot uh, with about 700 slots for trucks to park at. Because right now it's a problem and it's a shortage of uh, truck parking spaces. Right. So what I did was I identified a problem and, you know, I've been blessed. I'm in position to, you know, bust some moves right now. So I was like, look, when it's time for me to invest, I got to do something that solves a problem. Um, but, you know, I don't got nobody to, that I know that's done it before. So I don't really got a blueprint. It's like... I'm doing it scared, and I'm okay with that because I know everybody that's successful that's around me, they didn't like they didn't did something that was a little scary, but it just worked. Because you know my boy Neil said all the time, we always worried about what if it don't work, but what if it do work? It's gotta work or is it how to work? Yeah. What if it do work? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's oh, another thing. Man. Yeah, man. You know, the future is coming. Like whether we the like it or not, here. right? Technology. It's getting better and better. Like we, it was a point where we didn't think that we'd be able to see somebody on the phone. Mm -hmm. Like you ever was young, you talking to your little girl, and you're like, damn, I wish I could see you right now. And Worst we didn't shit realize they ever came out with. one Surprise. day we would be at the FaceTime, yo. <laughs> yeah. So I just believe that you know the technology is gonna get crazy and crazy. And Tesla, you know, they solving the problem, right? Fuel right now, even what was going on in the market right now with fuel. Diesel prices is the highest they ever been in trucking ever. <clears throat> so a lot of companies aren't positioned to be able to handle that. A lot of them got too much overhead, so now with the fuel prices going up, it's putting a lot of people out of business. So when I did my research, I'm like, damn, the Tesla truck, you don't need no fuel, right? You can get 500 miles on one charge. Then everybody was like, shoot, well, how long is it gonna take to charge? I did my research, 30 minutes. How long it take for you, when you was driving them trucks, how long it took for you to go to the truck stop and get fuel? By the time you run inside, pay for it, get you some snacks, use the restroom, come back out, wait in line to get the fuel, how long that took? Like 30, at least 30 minutes, right? 
So it takes 30 minutes to charge to get an extra 400 miles. Then he, uh, Elon was like, look, I'm putting a million mile guarantee that they ain't gonna break down for a million miles. And I thought it was cap. I'm like, that's not possible. So I'm like, why would he say that the truck ain't gonna break down for a million miles? Well, he put an engine on each axle. So it got four axles on the 18-wheeler. He put an engine, four engines, one on each axle. So three of them break down. Guess what, that one engine is gonna allow that truck to keep going. So it's $180,000. It ain't coming out probably for another year or two. I said, look, I'm making, I'm, I'm, you know, they saying I'm the face of trucking. I gotta get it. I gotta be the guinea pig. So I said, look, I'm gonna be the guinea pig. I'm gonna get it if it works. Cool, I'll be able to share my testimony, let everybody know, look, go get this truck. And if it don't work, I just turn it into a, a learning lesson and, and use it as a teaching moment. So again, I gotta put $20,000 down pay 180 for it and hope that, you know, Elon do what he's supposed to do with it. You know what I'm saying? But again, if it works, then guess what? I did it. I, I'm doing it scared. So a lot of y'all, man, like, you know, don't be afraid to, you know, do it scared. Do it scared. Do it scared. That's a fact. I like that. That's a fact. That's going to get you a meeting with Elon. You're going to be like, I remember that guy. Right? Yeah, man, he, he black. Down. He ain't going to meet I mean, he never, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no way. I'm not, not going to I'm going to the bathroom and take his jacket off. I'll shit. be worth trillion by then. Yeah, he be trolling. Motherfucker said a million miles. Guarantee, all right. We don't see. He said he got all them engines. That bitch break down, you better take each engine off. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's going to be Four interesting to cars. see, though, man. Because, you know, truck, truck is a world of what if. Yeah, that's the fucking, it's a vehicle. Mm -hmm. Anything can fucking This is the automated yeah. truck or somebody yeah. got to drive? Nah, this one, somebody got to drive, but they, okay. you know, I they can eventually. I see it now, a fucking truck broke down. That whole know, goddamn engine that know, came you, out that wheel. You know what I learned about from Elon is that people, successful people celebrate their wins and act like their losses never happened. Remember that armored truck shit? He got had? that shit from Donald Trump, though. Donald Trump, all of them. Mm -hmm. Remember yep. the armored truck? Thing. Yeah. And they, they they said the windows couldn't break. Um, yeah. And they threw a rock and it broke the window. <laughs> you never heard about it again. He act like it never happened. Yeah. Like so many times we get caught up on losses. Yeah. And it, it brings down our spirit. They act like it never happened, move on. But then when you win, you gotta amplify that. Yeah. Because people mm -hmm. only remember what you amplify. Just <laughs> quiet, act like it never happened and move mm -hmm. on. Like that's a lesson because so many times yeah. we let the losses yeah. like just break our spirit. We harp on it, we can't get over it. Just move on, like it's part of the game. America love a comeback story. Yeah, that's, yeah, a fact. that's a fact. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking about Ray J with the glasses. Shout out to Ray J. Yeah, oh, yeah. like it never happened. What did he say? So you can't break it. So what? Exactly. Same mentality. Yeah. Ray J. <laughs> Same mentality. As long as you got more wins than losses, <laughs> that's it. That's cool. I don't care. As long as you got more wins, it's unbreakable. Yeah. Spirit's yeah. unbreakable. Shout out to Ray J. Shout man. out to that's, that's what I got. Your I was just with him out in L.A. Yeah. Good dude, uh, right? Broke him. I don't care. So? <laughs> what? <Never happened. laughs> Don't matter. Never happened. I'll make a scooter. Never happened. <laughs> Ray J is the culture, man. That's fact. a fact. This motherfucker stay moving the culture. He just dropped that shit at the Versus Battle, that crazy ass dance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The internet one lives wish. forever. Yeah, I won't wish. He said that they was on. Um, I guarantee you, you used that little that little fucking thing <laughs> by the end of the year. That little clip. Everybody gonna be hitting. Them. <laughs> when, when, when the check clears. What? <laughs> right. That's the yeah, they already use it. He gonna capitalize on it. They already no, use no, it. Ray J's smart, man. He's smart. Dude. You know he don't. Soldier Boy, them dudes is geniuses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, they, they know how to stay relevant. They play that role. Yeah. Then with the ramen noodles thing The next did. night, eating ramen noodles. <laughs> you, think, you thinking that we catching them off guard and it was a whole marketing, it was a whole a marketing man, thing. always play the role of a fool, but a fool can never play the role of a wise man. I went to see Soldier Boy. We went, he, he classically playing, he playing a piano. Classically musical trained, like he's genius level. Right. Yeah. All that stuff that he understands what he's doing. Like, I'm like, oh, when did you learn to play the piano? Like, I'm talking about like Beethoven type shit. So, what was his reason for learning how to or doing? Because just he, he loved when, music. When he got into music, he realized that in order to be like a true musician, he had yeah. to learn all of the aspects of it, not just the rap. So he produces. Everybody know he produces, but I didn't know he actually played instruments. Wow. Yeah. But he was like playing the instruments. He learned how to read music. And learning how to read music actually made him a much better musician. Yeah, it's crazy. That, that's the duality of it. Like, he's gonna play the classical piano, and then the next thing he's gonna be 
between how he's gonna build a slide from his bedroom to his pool. <laughs> mm. it, that's that's part of the genius, right? Yeah. It's just like he's gonna keep staying relevant. I'm gonna do yeah, I'm gonna skate team. with one sock on. Like I'm gonna be the first person to do it. Like mm. they know how to stay relevant. Even that saying he the first person, it's Everybody, a joke, it's, but it's, it's real though, right? Because right? yeah. now it's like he said it so much, he's branded it. Yeah. So now it's like to say, nah, rage uh Soldier Boy was the first person to do this. Soldier yeah. Boy, like he he that's the way to keep his name relevant. That's a fact. Yeah. You're a genius. Marketing. Yeah, you're a genius. What's up, world? It's your boy Chico Bean. And in case you haven't heard, we at the 85 South Show have launched our own independent streaming service called Channel 85. And for our loyal supporters, we're currently offering 20% off for six months. Just use code 85%. That's P E R C E N T E E R 85%. And you'll get 20% off for the first six months. Now, once you sign up, you'll get access to the podcast a whole day earlier than everyone else on YouTube. All of our new live shows, independent specials, new shows like five on the 85 and even get special offers and discount codes for 85 south show merchandise and shows it's only eight dollars and fifty cents a month or 85 dollars for the entire year and you can find us online at channel 85.com or on your iphone apple tv amazon fire stick and roku and it's even on android for all my people with the green text and remember, use code 85 percent for 20 percent off for a whole six months. That's Channel 85. Subscribe right now. Bowling. Hey, what's up? If you're living paycheck to paycheck or struggling to make ends meet, it can be really stressful. When unexpected expenses come up, now Dave can help get you out of a financial pinch when you really need it. Dave is the banking app that can help you get up to $500 instantly with extra cash. There's more money to fill up your tank, buy a wedding gift, or catch up on bills. Millions of people have already downloaded the Dave app to get the financial relief they need with extra cash. So if you're in a pinch and you need some extra help, download Dave and think of it as a helping hand from future you. You can finally tackle those expenses that have been stressing you out without any hangups. There's no interest, no credit check needed. Download Dave today at dave.com slash 85 south. That's dave.com slash 85 south for an extra cash account and get up to $500 instantly. Terms and conditions, go to dave.com slash legal. Instant transfer fees apply. Banking provided by Evolve, member FDIC. Your future you will thank you. Nah. Oh, you got to Nah. You got to get him. Oh, shit, y'all got to get him. Big Draco. You got to get him. Big Soldier. That'll be hard. Legendary. That'll be hard. What? What is it, Cat? Yeah. It's going good. We did a couple. Of course, we got the truck. We got vending machines. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Appreciate that. Yeah, I guess I was some weed in it. No, we was actually. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Al Harrington. We interviewed Al Harrington. Oh, what? Yeah. Um, Got on show. Sure. Heavy in stocks. Yeah, we. Stocks, yeah. Real estate with MG. Mm-hmm. Um, he sent us some weed up here. Viola? 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 Yeah. Powerful. Viola brand. I, I, it was so good, I forgot to tell him thank you. <laughs> hey, hey. Shout out to Al. <laughs> Harrington, man, yeah. it was a good week. Appreciate it, bro. Yeah, yeah, So I was, we did a couple, like, couple different things. Because it's like, what's the point of having relationships if you're not going to use them? Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy because, like, when we sit down with people and they got an expertise, like, our questioning starts changing. Like, I'll hear how he's asking questions, because I know we're about to have a conversation after, like, yeah, Absolutely. I think we can do this. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, when we did our episode, I knew they was going to get a truck. Like, I knew. You I'm know like, yo, wait, this makes too much dead sense. Why are we not doing this? And so the best thing is, like, yeah, we get to learn on the spot, but then we get to have the resource to hold our hand. Like, all right, listen, we're going to do this. It's going to help build our brand. It's going to help build your brand, and people get to watch it, so it's going to inspire them. Like, wait, these dudes, these dudes didn't know anything about it, but they did it. Right, mm-hmm. they they took action. I always say like we jump off the porch because it's like all right, well fuck it, we are gonna learn. People are gonna learn through us, and so it helps both parties. You know what I'm saying? So anytime you hear those type of questions coming from us, it's like all right, we can do it because we know we know what people want to do. They just got they need the information, and so like this generation, especially this generation, the amount of information that's being given because we know in the past like people just hoarded it. Yeah. They didn't want you to win. It was like mm-hmm. I got it. Good luck. Figure it out on your own. And now we coming through it like now. Nah, his information, we got it, you can have it too. Let's see how it's all built together. Man, throw some resources out there that you want to lead the people to then. Mm-hmm. 
Earn Your, your Leisure. Earn Your Leisure, <laughs> first and foremost. First and foremost, yeah. That's, that's, y'all should be watching Market Mondays every Monday. Shout out to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all should definitely be watching High Level Conversation. Shout out to my man, 19 Absolutely. Keys. Absolutely. Yeah. Y'all should be watching EYL mm-hmm. every episode. That's a fact. Yeah. Rants and, and Gems, Rants if you watch Gems Real Estate. Real Estate, <laughs> Cash Cash and Show, mm-hmm. Inside the Vault. Yep. We created a whole mm-hmm. ecosystem. Mm-hmm. And your leisure. It's other people doing their thing too, but it's like, we feel like we took the same model for music. It's like when you hot, you got two choices when you hot. You can just double down and focus on yourself or you can start helping others and grow. Yeah. And we took that approach. So now it's like, all right, we can produce content. We can have other shows. So it's like, we, we don't rap, so we don't got a record label. Yet. You should. Bro. You should. Well, that You'd be, be the coming. best fucking record label owner. Yeah. Because you that, ain't got no interest in that shit. There's talks mm. about, about that. Yeah. Drop so, a song. Fuck it. We, well, I'm working on producing a song. And uh. And uh. Nah, like you say you should nah. rap. No, no, I'm not rap. No, 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 no. Drop that. You was about to say that shit. I was your ass crazy. Like, if I can rap, no, I swear to God, Jimmy, tell these that's niggas how I used to get down. No, that's, like, yeah, no, that's crazy. I was just about to say that. Literally, I was just about to say Dame, because Dame, my God. I was just about to say, if I'm doing anything, I'm going to beat Dame Dash on the record. Just talk Just talk Just talk to the Just talk to the remix, though. Let me show you your ass on the remix. That's a fact. Throwing champagne money. Earn your leisure. Bigger than never. No big examples. No big examples. I like that. Keyword. I ever. like that. Don't and, forget uh, that. Another right. resource they can tap in for anybody that want to, you know, learn about the truck game. You know, goodenergyworldwide.com. This guy right here. You know, yeah. And we talked about like speaking it right. Yeah. When I started my company ten years ago, I was gonna go with Good Energy. I was like, nah, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be worldwide. So I actually named my LLC as Good Energy Worldwide. Yeah, I spoke right. that. You, you got to get into that solar power too, player. Oh yeah, for sure. No, I'm just fucking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got the name Good Energy. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. We gonna we'll do an energy drink though. That's what we all doing. Word. So, yeah, we already got it. Oh, and that's breaking news. Speak on it now. Breaking yeah, news. Energy drink coming. But um, yeah, GoodEnergyWorldwide.com. You know what I'm saying? We got the uh, complete trucking portal for people that wanna. Learn how to uh, be, be a fleet owner. We got the dispatch mastery course for the people that's not ready to get a truck yet. Yeah. Want to learn the dispatching game. And, uh, you know, the Instagram, I, I give a lot of game. I give a lot of free content. You know what I'm saying? I've been giving game for 10 years almost. And uh, people always be like, look, why, why you give away so much game? Like, you, you give away so much. And I tell them, if you feel like you're giving away too much, you don't know enough. You know what I'm saying? But uh, mm-hmm. Alex underscore good energy, A-L-I-X. Oh, we didn't even yeah. talk about the upcoming recession. Recession. This shit gonna drop like an album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like like, an album. I feel like, I feel like we're in a no, recession. It's, it's here. It's I officially like here. In, I feel like we're in a recession right now. They haven't officially announced it yet, but they will. A recession is two, two negative quarters of GDP, so we just about to finish this quarter. So, But the good thing about recessions is that there's opportunities in every crisis. And I feel like a lot of people make their fortunes during recessions. So it's like, you know... A lot of businesses fail, but some businesses succeed. And if you are the business that succeed, that makes you an authority in the space. So now it's like, you know, only the strong survive, right? So if you can survive during the rough times, then when the good times come, you're already going to be 10 steps ahead. And um, it also gives you an opportunity to invest. Because, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. like, now the stock market is down, crypto is down, everybody panicking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, you know yeah, 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 yeah. That nigga bought all the dough. He bought all the dough yeah. coins. The dough. He said dough. He got all the coins. He said dough. Every, <laughs> every one of them. But yeah, like we know, when stocks is down, crypto is down. People panic and they want to sell. But it's like this is an opportunity to buy. Like I heard a crazy story. Um, Don Peebles. You ever heard of him? Don Peebles, real estate developer. He's black. He's probably like a billionaire, close to a billionaire. He, and we talked to him, and he said the illest. He said his theory would invest in, in real estate, but you can apply it to everything. It's like a clock. He was like, when when the clock is at twelve o'clock, that's the peak. Like you don't want to invest in. He was like, you wanna you wanna actually wait until it gets to like four o'clock. And he was like, from four o'clock all the way to like eight o'clock is when you should be buying, and then from eight o'clock to eleven o'clock is when you should be selling. And it's like, if you think about it like that, that's like buy low, sell high. Most people do the exact opposite. Most people mm. buy high and they yeah. sell low. Yeah. Like those, right? Because of what's called FOMO, fear of missing out. So what happens is psychologically, you see Bitcoin and it's at $10,000 and you're like, all right. Then it goes to 20000 
you're looking at 30,000, 40,000, 50,000. Now by the time it gets to 60,000, you feel like every single person in the world got it. And you're the only person that don't have it. Yeah. And it's going to go to 300,000. Yeah. So you put your whole life savings in. Mm. Then it goes like, there. You're telling my whole life story. No, not me. <laughs> not me. I got so a piece of tax. I, I couldn't understand it all the way. <laughs> so you got a piece of it. Yeah, 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 I couldn't yeah. understand it. Yeah, that's what, but, then, but then it goes from 60 to 20. Then what happens psychologically, you get so nervous and so rattled, you see your money go from 100,000 down 40,000, you, you, you panic. So now you're thinking, mm -hmm. all right, I'd rather lose 60% of my money than all of my money because it's going to zero. And you sell. And then what happens, it goes back up. That's the cycle. That's you don't lose shit till you sell it. Exactly, it's a fact. but it's emotions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so many emotions. emotions that come into investing. That's why we always tell people, you gotta invest long term, right? Most people wanna trade, they wanna make money as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. But the same person who hasn't invested, right, when you see companies like Apple, or you see an Amazon at $100, or you see a Disney that's like $98, mm -hmm. that's a perfect time to get it, right? Because mm -hmm. these companies aren't going anywhere. We already know that, right? If I had to ask you the top five companies over the next 10, 15 years, you're probably gonna say Google, Amazon, Apple, Tesla will probably be thrown in there, it's a little bit more volatile, but like they're at a discounted price. Like we're the only community that says like, all right, stocks are discounted, let's not buy them. Right. But like when clothes are discounted, it's like, let's run to the mall. Right, mm -hmm. right? we do it, all right? I, I, we're, we're so accustomed to being consumers that we don't realize that we can be owners. And so if we get that, that's what this is about, right? Like our whole movement is like to change that mindset. Like mm -hmm. let's shift from consumerism to ownership. <clears throat> and so this is the time, like if the market's down, yeah, there's something that's called the fair and greed index. It tells you, like, when people are in fear, that's when you buy. When people are greedy, that's when you sell. It's kind of like this, this similar to that clock analogy. Right now, people are in fear. Yeah. So we should be looking at it like, all right, this is a perfect time to go put money into companies that I think are gonna be here long term. And you don't, you don't even have to think about it. Like, you're probably already consuming them. You probably got an iPhone. You probably already shop on Amazon. You probably use Microsoft. Or, like, you're using all these products. So you don't have to ever think about it. You're, you're the one that's making these companies Rich. have sustainable mm -hmm. power over the long term. And okay. you're only supposed to invest what you're not afraid to lose. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. the oldest rule in the book. You only invest what you ain't got a clock. You know, you, you ain't supposed to invest the money that you're going to need for rent next month. Like, period. So that, that way you can just, you don't got to be so emotional with your yeah. decisions. Fact. And it, even in a recession, like even now, like people like, I shouldn't invest in things, but we know in times of inflation or recession, people can invest in commodities. This is something that we talked about like four months ago, like commodities. We know gold is a commodity. We know silver is a commodity. But there's a commodity that everybody's gonna use every day that's never gonna go anywhere, that's food, right? And if they are raising prices on food and you can invest in food, wouldn't you? Yeah. Right, that makes sense, right? So look, if I could buy shares of corn <coughs> or wheat or soy or sugar, Right? And we know the prices of those things are going up. It just mm -hmm. makes perfect sense that I should be putting my money in those things, especially if inflation is at its all-time high, like it is 41-year high. And then even bigger than that, because a lot of times people was like, I, I don't have money to invest. This is our, like, you got to, you can't really invest without money, right? But that's why we big on business. Like, business is very important to us because it's like, now you get a successful business, now you actually have money to invest. Yeah. So it's like, this is an opportunity to start businesses, but you gotta start the right business. Right. Like, a lot of times in our community, we start businesses that's not scalable. Yeah. So it's like barbershops, mm -hmm. it's like restaurants. We gotta do all the work. Yeah, that's yeah. Mm -hmm. it's a job, really. Yeah. That's not, you, you trade in one job for another. You're an employee for yourself. Like, I, was, I, I remember, like, I used to be a financial advisor, so um, this Instagram, she had a lot of followers on Instagram, like a million, two million followers. She came to my office and she was talking to me and she was like, yo, I'm in a mall in Jersey, but I'm about to go out of business. I'm like, wow, she's like, I got a clothing store. And they was charging like $15,000 a month for a clothing store. It was crazy. Right. And I'm like, well, why you got a physical store? It doesn't even make any sense. You worry about people stealing from you. You can't pay your rent. You got to pay your light bill. You got to pay employees. You got 2 million followers. But geographically, only a probably 1% of your followers live within a 10-mile radius of your store in Jersey. Now, if you got an online boutique, you could be selling stuff to people in China, in Australia, in New Mexico, California, wherever, with no overhead, right? No store. You can actually just drop ship it, so you don't even got to have a physical warehouse. So that's a lot more efficient. That's a scalable model. Mm -hmm. It's not a scalable model to have a physical location that you're just struggling just to pay the rent. So it's like even the way that we look at business a lot of times, we got to rethink it. Like this is, this is a new day, this is a new era. Make it make sense. It got to mm -hmm. be global. If it can't be global, 
at this point in time, you got to rethink it. You got to rethink the whole strategy. And everybody got to be getting money on the internet somehow. The internet is like mandatory, you know? And, you know, my mentor, when I met him in 2018, shout out to CJ, I used to do one-on-one -on -one consultations. Every month, I would get a, I, five to six people, charging $10,000 a client, five to six people a month. I'm like, damn, 50 to 60,000 a month, I'm good. But when I met my mentor, he changed my whole mindset. He like, look, man, yeah, you're doing a good service, but you're only one person. You can't scale yourself. Mm -hmm. So the biggest piece of advice that I got that changed my whole life was, yo, put your information online. Package it up and sell it, and now you can reach more people. So I went from five, six clients a month. I didn't want to take more than that because I didn't want to sacrifice the integrity of my, my service. We put it online, and within three and a half years, we done trained 27,000 people. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Real talk. So, like, you got to be online somehow. You know, that brick and mortar, we got to, like, we got to get up out of that. You know what I'm saying? If you, if you do it, you got to make sure you're online too heavy. Yeah. And I just want to say one more thing, too, as far as he brought up the recession, there's one word that, that comes to my mind. You know what I'm saying? Preparation. Preparation. A lot of people, <coughs> you know, if you if, if you feel in this recession, if, you going, if you're going to go through the motions right now, it's because you didn't prepare. And it's so important that, you know, when you have opportunities, you take advantage of those opportunities. So much money got put into the system in 2020, mm -hmm. right? Where we seen everybody at, though? We seen them in the malls. Y'all didn't, pre a lot of people didn't prepare. And I ain't trying to beat nobody down, but a lot of y'all didn't prepare. You thought it was gonna be a gravy train the whole time. So now when the situation happens now, you caught with your, with your, with your pants at your ankles. Where, you, where that money your grandmama gave you? Like when your mama used to ask you that. But that's the crazy thing in life. Like that's just like on any level, street level, whatever. You prepare for bad times during good times. You don't Facts. prepare for bad times during bad times. Yeah. Like you know what I'm saying? Like you gotta yeah. prepare for mm -hmm. bad times during good times because you know it's gonna come. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Watch yourself. You gotta know. Yeah. You, know you gotta know. Anticipation for precipitation stack chips for a rainy day. Bro, we've seen the Model. highest rates in trucking. In the last six months, five, six dollars a mile. I had, I've been in the game 10 years, I've never seen rates so high before. But even during that time, when everybody's making 10, 15,000 dollars a week with their truck, I was telling them, like, yo, chill, like, make sure you stack your bread. Make sure you, make sure you mm -hmm. create an escrow account and put it away. Because it ain't gonna be like this forever. And the ones that listen, fuel prices went up, they chilling, they coasting because they, they got that stash. So again, how you prepare during the peak season will determine how you survive during the slow seasons. That's a fact. That boy good. That's <laughs> a fact. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking told you. <laughs> yeah, man. The game is changing, man. So this yeah. be a teacher lesson right here. You know what I'm saying? You're going through it. We're going, we're going to get to the other side. But just remember how you feel right now when everything, if you if you getting affected by it, know how you feel right now. And when, when that opportunity comes, stop playing, man. The last you know? time we was here, we was talking about investing. And we, we gave you the stocks to invest. Did you did y'all pull the trigger on them? Hmm. You did. He, 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 he been doing it again. Yeah, he, he even texted us to say thanks, guys. <laughs> what you told him? What you said jump on? He don't like me telling him. <laughs> We'll talk after. <laughs> all right, all right, all, every time y'all post some shit, I go watch that nah, shit. Nah, Los, 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 I always ask that to anybody who knows a little guy. I just gave you the agriculture right now. Agriculture. Sure, because we're not, we're, not really we're not thinking of it, right? Yeah. Most people look at tech, but like when tech has a, a fall like it has, right? A correction, a pullback, a recession is, is here, 30% yeah. pull downs. It's like, all right, well, where do we go now? We only know tech companies. Because right. tech can be affected by, uh, you know, Product, materials, all that type of shit. Motherfuckers got it. Yeah. Though. Interest mm -hmm. rates go up, yeah. right? It's gonna cost you more than out to have the labor. It's gonna cost you more to do parts. The supply chain issue doesn't help, right? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. probably the number one issue right now. Obviously, what's happening in Ukraine affects it. But all these things, like you need to know all the sectors, right? And so when we think about uh, medicine and healthcare, right? We know that we just came out of a pandemic. We know who the people are trying to push this vaccine. Somebody's making it. 
somebody's bottling it, right? All these other, there's so many, there's 11 sectors. Pick two or three, maybe four, and find a, the best two or three companies inside each sector, mm -hmm. and you're gonna have yourself a nice portfolio, right? So go with what you know. If you know tech companies, go with that. If you know industrials, go with that. If you know consumer discretionary, go with that, right? If you know healthcare companies, go with that. Look at the top two or three in that, that, that sector. Mm -hmm. All right, these are the leaders of the sector. All right, these are the companies I probably should look into. Hope y'all don't let that go over your head. He just broke it down and made it so simple yeah, yeah. on how to make your decisions on what you buy. Yeah. You got and you got to attack like even Wall Street Trapper at the beginning of, of the pandemic. I called him and I'm like, yo, whatever you're doing with content, double it, do more, do more content, because it's like even like war. If you think we talking about Russia, Ukraine, you talk about war. Like generals don't attack when armies are strong. You attack when they weak. So it's like when the economy is weak, that's when you should attack. Like yeah. that's when you should be going crazy. When the economy is strong, you still gotta do work, but you don't have the same opportunity. When everything is down, that's when you can actually go crazy. And that's mm -hmm. what we did. Like at the beginning of the pandemic, we started to show Market Mondays went crazy. Like we just we just started doubling down on content because everybody was home mm -hmm. and they had nothing to do. And not only did they have nothing to do, they didn't really have no money. And then they got money from the stimulus. So now it's like you got money, you got nothing to do, you need to know what you to do with your money, mm -hmm. and you got time. So now everybody started doubling down on our content. So we didn't know that the pandemic was coming, but we was in prime position mm -hmm. to capitalize from the pandemic. And people capitalized too. So like a lot of people listened to the information, they executed on it and they made money. And so now they're looking at it like, wait, I have more money than I've ever had in my life. And so that's what, it goes back to that point when you become, when you take advantage of a crisis, you become yeah. the authority in the space because you're giving the information. And now we don't even have to say it, right? People like, yo, I just listened to these dudes and I made mm -hmm. this money, yo, you gotta listen to them too. And so the word of mouth becomes like, oh, mate, they become the authority in the space of how we should be investing. Mm -hmm. And you got to be able to flip your product multiple times. So it's like from, from I, look at, I look at business like, like a tree. It got a lot of different branches on it, right? So it's like they always say you need seven streams of income. People get discouraged because they think you got to have seven different businesses or seven different jobs. And it's like, who has time to do that? But it's like, for us, like we started Earn Your Leisure, right? So that's a media company, we produce podcasts. And you look at podcasts, like podcast is free. How you even make money from mm -hmm. that? But you know how you can get ad revenue from audio, but you can also get ad revenue from YouTube. But that's only the baseline beginning. So now it's like, all right, now we can actually sell merch because we gotta wear something, like how y'all wear y'all clothes. We wear our clothes all the time. So it's like, all right, now we can sell merch, that's one way. And then it's like, the, the podcast is free, but that's still kind of like, I like to say it's like public school where we just saying information, right? So now what if we create a private school experience? So now we create EYL University and that's a paid subscription, but that's a small Zoom class and people get to ask questions and we do group activities. So now it's like, now we actually holding your hand. So now if you want the public school, we're gonna teach you for free. But if you want a more higher level education with your hands held, now we can do EYL University. So now we got that, right? So then it's like, all right, people like this, let's take this show on the road. So now it's like, okay, now we can actually start doing events and start touring. So now we do shows and we talk about InvestFest, but now we got a festival, right? Mm -hmm. So now it's like that. So, and it's like, okay, now we got this good. We could produce content for other people. So now we start producing shows for other people. So it's like, that's a lot of different things that we're doing, mm -hmm. but it all centers around one thing. Mm -hmm. So it's not like we reinventing the wheel redoing, trying to create all these other different businesses. We just, once we mastered one business, we just do a branch, yeah. mm -hmm. branch off. So now it's like EYO Kids, yeah. EYO University, mm -hmm. EYO Trucking, right. EYO Vending mm -hmm. Machine. Yep, yep, like yep. you know I'm saying, these are all just branches off of the mothership, which is Earn Your Leisure. Yeah. I can give you another example if you want. I started my trucking company. I got my trucks. I said, okay, cool. Let me create something else. It's called diversifying within your own industry first. Started a dispatch service. Started accepting trucks that we could dispatch for, 10%, right? Then we dropped the course. Then I'm like, shoot, let me create something that my students can benefit from. We're doing a truck parking lot. Guess who's gonna fill that parking lot up? My students. I got over 27,000 students at the clothing line. That's five different streams of income 
in one industry. You too short? You need one more? <laughs> two more? You gotta come out with something else. You gotta come out with a hot. You gotta come out with a hot. Yeah, man. Nah, but that's what it's about, bro. And like I said, it's not even just, you know, it's really just a form of education. And I feel like just even us having this conversation is education. It's not education like going to school and learn. They might be smoking, they might be drinking, they might just be having fun, but in the course of them having fun, being entertained, you might actually be able to learn something and you can mm-hmm. actually implement it. Like, that's how I learned from rap. So it's like when I'm listening to Nip and he's talking about I'm integrated vertically, like, he's talking about a lot of different things, but while he's saying that, and I'm like, okay, what does that mean? Then I'm looking at Apple. Like, how does Apple integrate vertically? Then I see what he did with the Marathon store. So he's dropping gems, he's dropping business gems inside of the lyrics, and it's like, it's decoded. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so now it's a, it's a new form of education that's entertaining. Yeah, so now it's like, like you look at everything. Dude. Entertainment, yeah, exactly. That's what I said. That's what y'all doing. You like, yo, can't stop it. <laughs> I think. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We went yeah. to London. You know, it's crazy because we do different events, and then it's like you just gotta keep pushing the limit. You gotta keep pushing the limit. So it's like, all right, let's go to let's go overseas, and we know that London's our like second biggest market outside of America. Well, Nigeria is actually bigger. How'd you find that out, though? Analytics. Analytics. Studying Talk analytics. Talk about that. A lot of yeah. people don't know about that. Yeah, I mean, studying analytics. So, like, you know, when we, we do podcasts and this charts, we got to study, like, we, we're charting in these places. I never even knew that people listened to it. We didn't, they don't even speak the language. And so I got to go look at who's listening, how long they're listening, studying analytics from a viewership <laughs> standpoint and studying from a relationship standpoint. It's two different things. And so once we get the analytics, it makes easy decisions. And so we treat it like hip hop is really our biggest influence. And so if you think about it, when an artist goes out to do pop-ups or in stores, like what they used to do, they had to look at where they were selling. And so when they would, all right, well, we got some audience in Chicago. Let's do an in-store in Chicago. Let's sign some autographs. Let's take pictures. And so we treat it the same way. <laughs> when we started rolling with the podcast, we like, right, where are they listening at? Oh, Atlanta? All right, well, we got to do something in Atlanta. LA? All right, well, we got to go see it. Everything was for free. We just wanted to spread the reach and see how far the people were listening to us. And so Chicago became a place, Houston became a place. And then internationally, like I said, it's a worldwide topic. So Jamaica became a place we had to go. My whole family's from there. They were listening. We came number one in there. We were number one in DR. We were charting in Nigeria. We were charting in Kenya. So it was like, all right, the analytics are telling us where we need to be. Mm-hmm. It's also going to tell us where we can also grow, right? So it's like, all right, well, we're big in Nigeria, but are we big in Ghana, which is, you know, a neighboring country? All right, well, that might be a place we, can, we need to attack next. Once they see us come to Africa, it's like, oh, wait, they came to Africa. Wait, how come y'all didn't come to Ghana? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, that'll be the next stop. And, and it's like, you know, from, uh, like, we spoke to, like, this big, big billion-dollar company, and they like, yo, let's, let's do this for you. And, and I'm like, well, what can you do for us that we can't do for ourselves? And they're like, well, we can tell you, like, your major cities. I'm like, you can't tell me my major cities because we already went to all the major cities. We looked at the analytics. We paid for it ourselves. We did free events there. We tested the water. If we didn't get a good turnout, that means we need to double down. If we got a good turnout, that means we can do a paid event. We did this for three years before the pandemic we was doing mm. this. So it's like... You're trying to tell us that you can tell us our major cities, but we already know the major cities. Right. So going to London, that was a test run where it was like on paper, it looks good. We see the numbers, but you never know, especially over, overseas. You never know. So it was like, All right, let's go out there and let's do a free event, free event. Right. So we did a free event, networking event, spot held 300 people. It was like one of the, the biggest clubs in downtown London, like a vibe. And it was 2,500 people that showed up. God damn. So 2,200 people on the street. Mm-hmm. And it's in, it's in the winter, so mm-hmm. it's freezing outside. Mm-hmm. And they stayed the whole entire night. And it yeah. was crazy because it was like, the bouncer was telling us like, yo, we would never seen nothing like this. And it was mm-hmm. like, yo, they had secret service police because they're not used to that time. It was all black people in central yeah. London. Mm-hmm. That's like unheard of, like, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So it was crazy. Mm-hmm. And from doing that, it caused such a frenzy and the word of mouth got so crazy that we got something, but I can't announce it yet. Not but yet not they yet, offered please. us something out there. While we were there. And then the crazy <laughs> thing is like, you just gotta take chances. Like even we went to um, Egypt mm-hmm. and Troy, he told me, he was like, yo, I don't know if you know, but Nigeria is our second biggest market right now. I'm like, word? He like, yeah. I'm like, all right, let's go out there. We didn't have no plan or nothing. Literally, that's how the conversation I'm went. like, we gotta go. So we booked it, we booked it. We went out there, we met with, we uh, interviewed David O. Mm-hmm. One of the biggest artists Davido. in the world. Davido or Davido? Davido. Davido. Well, they call him Davido. Oh, what? It's, it's Davido. Davido. Yeah. Okay. We interviewed him. 
We did a networking event. We did so much stuff. And it's like, with no idea, just like, just go out there yeah. and we just gonna figure it out when we go. So I feel like doing that, pushing the boundaries, right? Like what started as a podcast turned into a worldwide media company, right? Exactly. And it's like, you gotta go to different places because <clears throat> people wanna see you. And you'll be surprised like how many, they like, damn, just for you to come out there, if they're just appreciated. Mm-hmm. They appreciate mm-hmm. it so much. Like, you took the time to come out here. Nobody Man, comes out say here. less. We're going international. Let's do it. Let's they do it. They keep asking us. Hey, yeah, gotta go. Go. Yo, y'all, been, y'all been to London? No. Oh, you got to go. You have oh, we to. Gotta it's going to be crazy. Toronto, to London. London. Yeah, Toronto. Toronto's incredible. Toronto vibes. Yeah, incredible. Yeah, 85% Toronto. is all over the world. Well, here we come, man. London, definitely London should definitely be on your, on your first stop. I'm telling sure. you, y'all gonna get so much love out there. I already know. It's gonna be yeah. amazing. Africa it's gonna too. blow your mind being in another country getting yeah. that love, too. You know what I'm saying? I ain't been out the country in a little minute. Yeah. I'm two summers. Yeah. Gotta do it. Y'all go where you celebrate I know, but the last time I went out the country, I was like, I'm gonna stay in America for a little minute. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't ever say, I just, it was... Which way? Bro, right when I got back to America, I was like, whoa! What country? <laughs> where, where'd you go? That's, that's Shit! The, that's what the country, key question. What country yeah. you go to? I went to Kuwait. Ooh, the last, you went to Kuwait? Really? Hell yeah, yeah. Like a cruise? But like with the, with the military? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that's okay. why. But I went a couple of times. Hey, what you went to Kuwait? You on a different mission. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he had to go to the military thing. I had some shows out there. Did some shows? Yeah, I went to Kuwait. But that Dubai shit really made me say, I don't want to stay in America. Nah, Dubai the best country you in the world. You said Dubai made you want to come back? You couldn't smoke. Shut up. Because you couldn't smoke. It ain't the best country in the world. It's not. Oh. Why you ain't like it? Because you couldn't smoke? Nah, because them motherfuckers is on one over there. Too strict? Nah, it ain't just too strict. I just, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't fuck with the vibe. Really? Yeah. I ain't been out there yet. Oh, yeah, man, man. Everybody I spoke to said that they love it. I you love gonna it. love it. I was just there three months ago. <laughs> Shut up. You gonna love it. Bring them outfits with you. <laughs> Three very, months ago, though, very it was it was amazing. It's so it, it, much you know, shit. You know what I noticed? So much those? shit that people ain't even gonna tell you that you gonna see over there that's gonna fuck with your head. Like what though? Yeah, I'm curious. I was just there. I'm curious. You'll see. <laughs> I, I don't want to use you know my what I platform noticed, though? to discourage your opinion. You know what I noticed? Though? It's not about where you go. Sometimes it's, it's who you with. Always. Too. It's always who you with. You know what I'm saying? So. I'm just saying that everybody has their own likes and preferences and shit. I prefer some other shit. What yeah. you what 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 country did you go to where you was like, this is a vibe? Um, Curacao. Okay. You some random ass country. That you went to shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Curacao. Yeah. That shit was so fun. There wasn't nobody on there. <laughs> <laughs> nobody on there. Yeah, yes, yes, it was. No. Only man. Yeah, just just smoking man. myself. Home yeah. of <laughs> Andrew Jones, right? Andrew Jones from Curacao. Yeah, yeah. Curacao. I loved it over there. That shit beautiful, man. But you never touched Africa. We went to this Africa. club that was on the side of a fucking mountain or some shit. It was like an outside club, but it was like, it was like it was in like a a mountain or some shit. That's and hard. then it was like you go to the other side of the club, like you walk through the mountain and shit, and then it's just the like side of the ocean, nigga. Mm-hmm. Just like right there. You just right. fall off the cliff. And the water clear as far as you can see, man. Like all the fucking way out there. But you've never been to Africa? Nah. Not yet. Not yet. Right. I'm going though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely going. on my list. We should make something happen. Yeah. Yeah, let's do that shit. Yeah. Why our 85 South tour? Man, that's what I'm saying. The international tour. <laughs> yeah. The international yeah. tour. Let's drop that shit. Yeah. Let's pick us fucking 10 places and just go do that. That's a fact. I'm dead serious. Uh, I, I, I want to do like some... Um, Earn your 85%. We need to do some events, man. <laughs> like one That's what you're like calling. Like <laughs> we can't get away with some shit, man. Take a dope I got an idea. I got an idea. I'll tell you, I'll tell you about it. Yeah. I got an idea. Get away. Because that's what it's about, too. It's not just about finance with us. Like, we started with finance and business, but it's about expanding the brand. Right. So, like, we about to do, like, a big basketball game mm-hmm. in, in New York for, like, high school kids. Like, sports is something that we really want to get into. Bring AAU back. Yeah. yeah. We, we, so, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, just doing different things, the fashion, doing different stuff where it's not just us drilling business in your head all day. Like, people heard it. They heard that, and if they want that, yeah. they can get it. You know what I'm saying? But we want to just have fun with it as well yeah. and expand, work with people like yourselves that's just killing the game and just, you know, see how we can help. So We got to do that drug dealer fashion show. Very important. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very important. We'll talk about that. <laughs> got something coming. We got something cooking. That's yes. dope. Yeah, we got something cooking. That's a big market right there. Yeah. <laughs> 
Anything else y'all want to drop on them before we got there? Yeah, I just want to talk. Um, so we got, I know we in Atlanta, so we got Invest Fest mm -hmm. coming up. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, what is that specifically? Invest Fest. So it's August 5th through the 7th. And the idea was like, once again, just thinking outside the box. Like, you always hear about music festivals. Coachella, Rolling Loud, Made in America, Roots Picnic, all these music festivals. But I had never heard of like a finance festival. Conferences, you hear conferences a lot, things of that nature, yeah. but I haven't heard of like a finance festival. So I'm like, how can I take the best aspects of a festival, but then add the education in it? So last year was the first year, this year is gonna be the second year. So it's like food trucks, it's game, we got a VIP night with musical performances, we're gonna have T-Pain there, like, it's just gonna be Look. a vibe. And, and it's like... Vendor Marketplace? Yes, Vendor Marketplace, just like Essence Fest. So we like just looked at different people was doing and was like, oh, I want to do this, I want to do that. So now we created what's called Invest Fest. And it's, like I said, it's August 5th through the 7th in Atlanta. And um, it's a three day of education, entertainment, fun. Ross going to be there, T.I., mm -hmm. Steve Harvey, Alex, his whole crew. Yeah, shout um, to the Circle CEOs. Circle, Circle CEOs will be there, Charlamagne. So yeah, so it's like where you can actually learn but in a fun setting. Meet people, we're gonna have after parties. And the, the idea is to like keep growing and growing to the point where it becomes like as big as Essence Fest, where it's like that weekend, it's just a bunch of unauthorized things happening, like a bowling alley, like this is happening. Like, you know what I'm saying? Where it's just so many people just coming into the city. And that's how we really build too. It's like, you know, think about how much money that can generate. Mm -hmm. It's already generating the city of Atlanta a lot of money. Like even last year, my barber, he was like, he flew from New York and the ticket prices was like $900. And he's like, he called like, why? He's like, yo, a lot of people flying down for this some, some reason this weekend. So mm -hmm. we actually inflated the ticket prices last year. So it's gonna be bigger. Like this year, we're looking at 10,000 people in a Georgia World Congress Center. So. Yeah. Yeah, so go that's to investfest.com, get your tickets. Um, and it's a vibe, man. Like I said, that's what it's about, right? Just thinking outside the box, seeing how you can just expand, seeing how you can just keep growing, keep growing. And it's like everything that somebody is doing, is nothing is too big. Because it's like I look at Coachella and people be like, people don't even think that that's possible, but somebody had to do that. Mm -hmm. Somebody had a vision, somebody put it together. So it's like if somebody did Coachella, why can't we do something just as big as Coachella? Like, you know what I mean? So if something is already done, that means it's possible. Somebody went to the moon, somebody went to Mars, that, that means that it's possible. And even if somebody didn't do it yet, somebody has to do something eventually. So if you're the first person to do it, it's like you really can't lose because you just learn from your experiences. So that's what we did with InvestFest, put up our own money, leveraged our relationships, got the talent. People looking at it like, it's crazy. How you do that? How you get all of these A-list celebrities, Steve Harvey, Tyler Perry? Like, how you get these kind of people, Rick Ross, and it's like, it's through relationships. Yeah. It's just through, like, you know what I mean? Being a good person, honoring your word, establishing relationships, and you can do something that Ticketmaster can do. Like, you don't got to be this big billion dollar corporation to do that. A lot of times we minimize ourselves and we think that we just talent. And it's like, let, let them handle the business and we can just be the talent. Now, we could be the talent and the business. Yeah. And it's, not about, and it's not about us, which is key. Right, like, yeah, we organizing it, but it's not about us. Like, somebody hit me the other day, they're like, why isn't your name first on your own flyer? I'm like, because it's not about us. It's about the people we bring in, right? We don't know who the CEO of Coachella is. If, you didn't, if I didn't tell you, you wouldn't know, right? You, Made of America, I've never seen Jay-Z's face on Made of America, but we know he threw it. You see what I'm saying? So we just taking that format where it's like, let's celebrate the people. Let's bring all of the best in their space. And let's have them all come together to celebrate community. You know what I mean? So... That's what it's about, man, lifting up everybody at the same time. Well, there you have it. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, we definitely appreciate y'all stopping through and dropping some game on us. Appreciate you having us, man. Appreciate well, y'all, man. Appreciate you coming through. For, you know, yeah, real quick, real quick, can shit. I just say one thing? Because I saw you bring out the Capri Sun, and the last time we was here, we was here with uh, Trouble, so I just want to say, rest in peace to Trouble. Uh, we shot our last episode with him. Yeah. When he was at 85 South. That was South, the first so. episode. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, he, he shot his episode, episode right before, so we got to watch him and really like, like all right, this dude's funny. That was the first time that I ever, yeah. I didn't know who he was. That's the first time I saw him and he was talking and he was so country. I, did, I couldn't understand anything yeah. that he said. Yeah. Chico, yeah. Chico, Chico was a translator. Everything that he said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, man, rest in so peace to that piece brother. Of trouble, and the man. crazy bro. thing about that is that episode never came out. Yeah, because the audio, yeah. that, cause no, all, all, all episodes didn't come out either. Because yeah. the audio yeah. got messed up. Yeah. yeah, but we were definitely here with him when we heard the news. We were like, damn. Yeah. So yeah, rest in peace to him and condolences to his family. Yeah, yeah. sure.
Keep on trucking, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> it ain't going nowhere. I'm going to keep, you I might know. jump back in there and throw some miles on the road. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I just, my goal is just to show people how to do it the right way the first time. Yeah, it's definitely yeah. A, a lucrative. And, uh, and when it's done right. Industry. When it's done right. It got but challenges. It can get costly. Yeah, for sure. Once you get, get to spending that bread on them trucks. Right. So I'm tires, keep... tires kill you. Yeah. We got like five flat tires, and I'm like, what the hell are you putting in these tires? <laughs> yeah, it's, not that big, yeah. it's that, it's that, it's that 80,000 pounds that you holding, you know what I'm saying? Pressure. But you know, with, even with tires, you gotta make sure that they aired up in the same PSI. All the way around. They gotta be all equal, you know what I'm saying? And um, I just wanna uh, shout out to the circle of CEOs, my brothers, uh, him 500, Mr. Two Weeks Out, New Age CEO, Neo. Uh, we getting ready to do something uh, amazing for the city. Yeah, I want to just, uh, huh? You ain't say just. New AC. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know, we five CEOs. And we real friends in real life. We all in five different industries. Yeah, everybody doing well for themselves. And um, you know, besides just helping the culture and teaching the people, uh, we we just know how important impact is. So we we doing something special. I don't know when this episode is dropping because we haven't released it yet, but it's coming soon. Um, we getting ready to do a restaurant. It's uh, the Circle of CEO feeds Atlanta. I appreciate that, but the, the twist on it is uh, it's a free restaurant. Um, we're feeding Atlanta, so basically this will be a restaurant that we're funding that uh, people can just literally go in there and eat for free, and it's going to be some good food. That shit sounds too good to be true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, it sounds like rental spoon. It's definitely... That's hard, though. Nah, but, you know, it's like anybody who's hungry. Yeah, you know, obviously, you know, it's definitely going to help the homeless for sure, but anybody can... Uh, Go in there and eat for okay. free. Yeah, yeah. Um, so um, I just wanted to um, let everybody know we, we we getting ready to do that for Let's the go. city. I'm excited about that right now. Let's go, bro. Yeah. Let's go, bro. Congrats. Let's go. Well, shit, Clayton. You ain't gonna feed the city? Hey, man, I, I feed them individually. <laughs> <laughs> one at a time. That's, one at a time. time yeah. right? You know what I'm saying? Y'all can't all come in here. <laughs> but I'll bring you something out here. Got some yeah. Cheetos and water for you. Like that, but nah, that's what's up. Yeah, that's gonna be crazy. There, bro. Yeah. Well, look, man, you know, this is not your first time in the trip. Don't let it be your last. Next, anytime y'all in the city, man, just pull up. Just stop sure. through here. And likewise, man, anytime y'all want to come on the platform, y'all got to announce me anything, you know, feel free. I'm coming on, man. I yeah, alumni. Of course. I got some shit to say. Let me, let me chat that let me episode. Chat. Yeah, we came through and then. Chico alumni. Put them up on game. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was a dope episode. Shout out to Chad. They're like, oh, that's what Chad it looks like. Yeah. Because they always they heard his name before. They're like, oh, that's what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, bro, I ain't. Where's Chad? Yeah. I told you, he made so much money, now he don't gotta come on time. Yeah. Nah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's hard. See, I'm not even coming. He's working remote. <laughs> so, That's all, bro, though. That's yeah. all, bro. For Shout sure. out to the nigga Chad Uber. Shout out to the whole team. What Joe at? Joe here? Hell no. Nah. See, they don't come. <laughs> they have earned their leisure, I guess that is. <laughs> nah, man, we appreciate y'all stopping through here fucking with us, though, man. 85 South Show. We out of here. Yeah, you did it, my guy. Appreciate that. Now I can smoke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I can smoke yeah, now. Smoke <laughs> <laughs> okay. You ready?